what is the worst possible outcome? I don't care who you are. I don't care the position that you have. You, at some point, will fear getting a new boss. You will fear getting a new team. Getting just a new team member can make you question what is going to happen in the future. And even starting a new job, even if you were headhunted for this job, you are going to fear the new. Deep down inside, you're going to be a little bit worried. Welcome to the channel, Leadership with Mike. On this channel, I help you become a more confident leader, and I do this with no-nonsense sense, if that makes any sense. Here's the thing. When you care about something, when you enjoy the status quo, as soon as somebody goes to make a change, it will send shivers up your spine. You will question, is this new boss, are they going to be a jerk? Are they going to change everything that I've put in to lead in this team? If you get a new team, are they smart enough? Are they actually going to be able to do the job that you have trained your previous team to do? Or work in that manner? If you get a new team member, are they more of an alpha and you think maybe you're a beta? Maybe you're a little bit more soft-spoken and you just don't like people that are loud and feel like they want to take charge and that just makes you uncomfortable? Or if you start a new job, you know nothing about the people working there. All of these things can justifiably be scary. I get it. I've been there and I've been scared as well. But what we need to do is figure out how is it that we're going to stop being so scared or at least bring it down a notch so that we can function. So the first thing you're going to do is just take a time out. You've made a decision or a decision's been made that something new is happening. You're getting a new boss, you're getting a new team member, a new team, you've applied for a new job. Take a minute and just give yourself a time out. Go for a walk clear the air. Don't think about the new stuff. Just give yourself an opportunity to relax. While you're doing that, this may seem obvious, but you need to breathe. But not like the <laughs> panic attack breathing, but you need to really just slow down. Count your breaths. Take it easy, my friend. Now that your state is kind of in control because you've gone, you've cleared your mind, you've worked, focused on breathing, here's the question I'm going to ask you. What is the worst possible outcome. The reason I ask you this question is that if we try to think of the worst possible outcome, that can be what we prepare for. That could be the aim. So your boss, let's say the new boss, while well, he could be an, or she, could be a narcissistic person. They could absolutely not jive with my personality and they hate me. They could make my life miserable. If I have a new team, maybe they're not as qualified as the team I was working with before. Maybe they've been under leadership that is absolutely slacking, where nothing was really maintained, nothing was under control. It was just employees did whatever they wanted, whenever they wanted, however they wanted. And now you have to come in and right the ship. That could be a tough one. Same with a new job. You're going into a new environment. You have no idea. Maybe the people are going to hate you. Maybe the person that left the job was like, oh, the best of the best. And you haven't even started. And they already look at you like you are evil. You are the devil. How dare you come and try to replace our God of the department? These are all real fears. But now that we've started to think about them, we can start to... Not rationalize, but hedge against those thoughts. And by doing that, what we're actually going to be doing is making a plan. Now, here's the thing. In this plan, you're going to plan for the worst. You're going to say, okay, my boss hates me, so I need to have some conversations. You're going to say, okay, this team, maybe they think that the person that left was the best of the best, and then I'm Trump coming in to replace them, which I'm not trying to replace that person. I'm me, and I just want to do the job. These are all conversations that you have to first have in your head, and then you can prepare for what may come in the future, what may come in the environment. If difficult conversations are 
difficult for you, grab my free PDF on how to have difficult conversations. It is right down in the description below. Now, you've made a plan for how you're going to deal with these worst case situations. And you're making a plan as to, you know, you're a new boss, so I'm going to come in and I'm going to meet everybody. I am going to introduce myself to the key stakeholders. I'm going to start having one-on-one -on -one meetings with my staff so that I can get to know them. And then what I want you to understand is that at some point, your plan, it's going to go to shit. And that's okay. Because by coming into a new environment or working with new people, if you have a plan, what that does for you is that it allows you to calm yourself. It allows you to collect your thoughts. It allows you to have just a smidge more confidence going into the situation. When things are changing as we're in it, most people can adapt. The biggest challenge we have is the unknown. The time that we are given the information until the time that we have to deal with the situation, that gap is the scariest moment for most leaders, most people in general. It's that time when it's just you and the voices in your head. And don't tell me you don't have voices in your head, but it's you and the voices in your head trying to make sense of it all. And it's going to scare you. Having a plan is key to keeping yourself grounded, but also kind of knowing what not to do or knowing, I don't know, five reasons why employees hate their boss, that can help you grow as a leader and that can help you stop problems before they even start. So head on over to the video, get your coffee, and I'll see you there. Ciao.